Good afternoon. It's like one of those meetings, isn't it? Uh, I'm Bill Burford, um, and uh, this play is the winner of the first annual competition uh, for undergraduates in Canada and the United States for a short play. The short play prize award is $1,000, and attendance at one of the workshops in um, the summer conferences. A great deal and a wonderful education for a young writer. And um, we will be reading this for you. Uh, Holly Goldstein and Denny Dale Best will be our cast. Instructions, and I think we're just going to jump right in. If we have time afterwards, we can do a little bit of talk back. I'll start where they're starting. <coughs> West by Bubba Weiler. It is the present, midday. A teenage girl straps herself into a pickup truck. The truck is a little the worse for wear. A middle-aged man drives. What are you doing hitchhiking? What are you doing picking up a young girl? You shouldn't hitchhike, though. Dangerous. Again, you're like participating in hitchhiking, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Seriously, though, you're safe with me. I'm not one of those, you know. But there are a lot of creeps out there. You can't trust people anymore, you know? Everybody's trying to get something. And you, you're a very pretty girl. Yeah. You calling me pretty is sort of where the creepy starts. Sorry, I, uh, I didn't mean... I'm just saying that these days... I mean, in my day, you could hitchhike all you wanted. That's how we got around half the time. Well, actually, I only did it a few times. But I had friends who did it all the time, and they had stories like bad stories. A kid in my town went missing, actually. Got picked up by the wrong car, and that was it. I had a close call once, too. I'm pretty sure. First time I ever did it, actually. I got picked up by this guy in this real nice car, a BMW, if I remember right. Older guy, probably 60. And he picks me up and I tell him where I'm going and he says it's out of his way, but he'll take me anyway. And I'm thinking he's real nice. But then he has to stop home for something. Which seemed normal to me at the time, you know. So he turns the car around and we go into this really <coughs> crappy neighborhood, like a, a bad neighborhood. I just keep thinking, this neighborhood does not match this car. And we stop at this house, this shack of a house, windows all broken and wood chipped off and all. And I just felt that something wasn't quite right about the guy. So when, we, when he went into the house, I ran out of the car, ran home. That's a really shitty ending. <laughs> what? To your story. I mean, it was good at first. Good setup, I mean. But then the end. It's like real boring. It's not boring. Well, nothing happens. Well, something happens. I run home. Oh, I would have stayed and seen what happens. Well, that's stupid. Maybe. Or made up the end, at least. Like what? Like, he comes out with a gun and starts shooting at you, or he comes out with an another kid all tied up and stuff. Well, that'd be lying. 
Lying's okay sometimes, I think. For a good story? Definitely. So where are you going? Wherever. Where are you going? Nowhere, actually. Nowhere? Yeah. This is what I do when things get, you know, I drive. It helps with the stress, whatever. Okay. So where you want to go? As west as you'll take me. West, huh? <laughs> go west, young man. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a. That's from. A, well, actually, I don't know what it's from. <laughs> Kirk turns up the radio. Oh yeah, what a song. I went down, 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 and the flames, they got higher. One of my favorites, definitely. Seriously? Yes, and if you don't like it, you can just leave right now. It's all right, I guess, but... If you're not a Johnny Cash fan, you can just get out. <laughs> and I'm barely kidding. A person doesn't like Johnny Cash is a person I don't want to know. My God. I fell for you like a child. Oh, the fire went wild. Wow. Johnny Cash is one of my heroes. Really? It's just, this song bothers me because it's like the song that everyone knows, you know what I mean? Like all the stupid people who say they like Johnny Cash because it sounds cool. Yeah. And it's like, if you were a real Johnny Cash fan, you'd be listening to like 25 Minutes to Go or something, which is a way cooler song. It's like saying, oh, I'm a Beatles fan. I just love I Want to Hold Your Hand. Like, shut up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you are so right. I know. Ring of fire, the ring of fire, the ring of fire. You have a great voice. <laughs> Thanks. No, really, it's amazing. Yeah, I want to be a singer. So. Well, you got what it takes. Definitely. Just keep going straight? Yep. All right. How much further do you think you can take me? Oh, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I just feel, I don't want you to go too far out of your way. I told you, I'm not going anywhere. What's with that? With what? Just driving around. I don't know, I like it. I think it's kind of an asshole thing to do. Hey. <laughs> no, I mean it. We're all supposed to be trying to drive less, right? And you're out here just driving for the hell of it. It's selfish. Well, if I wasn't, where would you be? No, I'm not saying I'm not glad you're doing it. I'm real glad. But people don't just drive around. I do. Maybe you should get a hobby or something. I have a hobby. It's driving. Well, that, hobby, that hobby sucks. Why? A hobby is supposed to be fun. Driving's I'm, fun. I'm like, I don't know, original? Everybody drives. Yeah, and you're the only angsty teen musician in the world. <laughs> Sorry. Don't you have a job to be at or something? What? A job. What do you do? I'm a salesman. Of what? Cars, usually. But no, right now I do not have a job. Is that why you drive? What? Because you don't have a job. No. Gives you somewhere to go. Stop it. Something to do with your meaningless day. You should keep your mouth shut about things you don't know anything about. Sorry.
My wife left me. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I, that sucks. I think she's still here though. In Greenberg, I mean. She always said she'd never wanted to leave Greenberg, so. I tried to get her to move all the time and she never would. She grew up here, so. Yeah. So I fi I'll find her, I think. If I go around enough, I'll find her. How long ago did she leave? Nine days. She could come back. Maybe. I'm sorry, I... It's okay. You didn't know. I'm nosy. By nature, I pry. Yeah. Always in everyone's business. I have a niece like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, wait, you might know her, actually. Uh, you go to North? Yeah. Haley Grinton? Um, Blonde, kind of chubby? It's a big school. Yeah, yeah, I know. Can you get on the highway? The highway? Yeah, just right here. Well, that's kind of a problem for me. Why? I get on that highway, the next exit's in Iowa. Yeah, so? I take you cross state lines, I'm a kidnapper. You're not a kidnapper if I want to go. Well, that's not the way it works. You're underage. You don't know how old I am. You're not as good as acting old as you think you are. Fuck you. Look, I don't mind taking you. I just gotta know what I'm getting myself into. You running from something? <coughs> Some abusive boyfriend? Father? It's nothing like that. Well, what? If I won't make myself a felon, I gotta know. It, it's nothing. I'm just moving out. You're a teenager. Yeah, so? Does your mom know about this? Hello? Kirk turns the car around. What are you doing? Taking you home. No. I'm not gonna be the one who helps you run away from home. Then let me out. No, I'm taking you to your mother. No. I know what it's like to be ran away from. She doesn't care. Yes, she does. She won't let me come back. What? I can't go back till I have her money. What? I stole from her. I met this guy, said he'd make me a demo for 90 bucks. So I took the money from a hole in her dresser where she keeps it and gave it to the guy. He wanted it in like advance or something with I don't know, like reserving the recording room or something. So I gave it to him and I never heard from him again. And I can't like tell her that. She already thinks I'm stupid enough. Do you want to go home? If you could, would you want to? Yeah. Why? My little brother. Kirk rolls the truck over, opens the glove box, and pulls out his checkbook. What are you doing? Writing you a check? No. Yes. You won't have a job. Yes, you I can't. can. I'll be fine. He rips the check out, hands it to her. Thank you. He pulls back onto the road. Where do you live? Turn right here. Okay. And then you're going to turn left on Maine, and I'm on the corner of Violet and Maine. Oh, by the church. Yeah. I went to that church once. Yeah? Yeah, thought I'd try it. Not for me. Yeah, me either. They ride in silence. Finally, Kirk reaches into his door pocket. There's something else I want to give you. No, you don't. No, I really want you to have this. He pulls out a CD. This is one of my favorite artists. She's a 
not a lot of people have heard of her, but she's great. <laughs> and she's, maybe she'll inspire you, your music. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. And when you're famous, you can sign it and send it back to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, why are you being so nice to me? I don't know. Uh, human? Whatever. It's right here. Kirk pulls the truck over. There you go. Thank you. Oh, hey, what's your name? Jules. Jules, I'm Kirk. Nice to meet you. You too, Jules. She gets out. She waves at him as he drives away. When he's out of sight, she looks at the CD, tosses it to the ground, pockets the check, walks to the corner, and sticks out her thumb. End of play. Gentlemen, Bubble Wire couldn't be with us today. Unfortunately, we've uh, tried to make a video of it for him. But uh, appreciate your being here. If you have uh, comments about the play, please come talk to me. I'll ask anyone to the author. And I want to thank our performers again. Thank you very much.